to show you how to make Creative Kiwi's latest freebie which is the in the hoop bag and for that I'm going to be using my 4x4 hoop, cutaway stabiliser, tape, a variety of threads, a zip, my fabric and batting cut size and my curved scissors. I'm going to start by hooping my cutaway stabiliser and I'm now going to pop that into my machine and stitch round number one and that's going to give me the outline placement for the zip. So now we're going to place our zip in place and we want the centre piece here to line up with the second line there. So I'm going to turn my hoop round so that I can see what I'm doing and I'm going to place it down and just line up and tape it. I'll turn it around to do exactly the same this side. You do need to take the time to get the zip in the right place and if you don't get it right the first time I advise you to unpick it and redo it. Okay. So I'm now going to pop that back in my machine and stitch round number two and number three. Round number two is going to stitch this side of the zip and round number three is going to stitch the opposite side of the zip. And now round number three. We're now going to add our first fabric and I've chalked in the stitch line uh, just so that you can see it because it, I'm using white cotton and it didn't show up obviously against the pink so what we're going to do take your fabric flip it over and align it to your the bottom of your zip there and it's the bottom stitch line that you want to cover like that and then we're going to take that in place I'm now going to pop that into my machine and stitch round number four and that's going to secure the fabric. I've removed the tape from here and I'm now going to place my batting and I'm using um, poly, uh, poly fleece for this and I'm going to pull that back down and tape it in place. I'll now pop that in my machine and stitch round number five and that's going to stitch down on the diagonal and along up here. Now that's stitched I'm going to trim off the excess fabric here just leaving about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm now going to add the second fabric to do this corner here. And I'm going to show you how, if you've got a, a fabric that has a right or a wrong way up, how to get it nice and straight. First off, place it over um, your uh, corner and then you're going to fold it back and crease along the stitch line. Like that. Crease it well and then you're going to crease it back on itself and then place that crease along the stitch line like that and then when you fold this back you'll know that when when that's stitched along here and this comes back over it's going to be nice and straight so I'm going to take that in place pop that in my machine and stitch round number six and that's going to secure this fabric. I've removed the tape and it's up to you whether you leave this piece of fabric here or not. I'm going to cut it off just to reduce the bulk. And I'm now going to pull this down and secure it in place. 
I'm just going to trim off a little bit of this fabric because I did cut it excessively big. Okay, that's better. So I'm now going to put some tape on. Pop that in my machine and stitch round number seven. And that's going to stitch down this corner. Before I put this in my machine, I've just trimmed off a little bit of the excess fabric here. And I've where the two fabrics overlapped, I've put a little bit of tape because if your foot's going to catch anywhere, it's going to be there. And, and it's easier to prevent it than it is to cure it. Next is round number eight, and that's going to do the quilting on the blue fabric here. Next is round number nine, and that's going to do the quilting on this side. I've changed my thread to hot pink, and I'm now going to stitch round number 10, and that's going to do the decorative stitching along the join between the two fabrics. Next is round number 11, and that's going to stitch the initial. We're now going to add the front lining, so I'm going to turn my hoop over and you're going to crease your fabric about half an inch or so and then you're going to place it with the right side of the fabric facing up on just over your um, bottom zip line there. and tape it in place. Okay, turn that back over. I've changed my thread to hot pink again and it's now going to do the decorative stitching along here and that's going to secure the top of the lining fabric. We're now going to attach the back fabric and on the back of my fabric I've added some interfacing, um, heat and bond interfacing. We're now going to add our back fabric and on the back of mine I've added some heat and bond um, interfacing because um, I wanted mine to feel a little bit padded. So you're going to take your fabric, hold it the right way up, then turn it over and align it to the top stitch line there and then you can tape it in place. The stitching to secure this is going to be stitched in two parts. First is number 13 which is going to do the top edge here and then we've got to open the zip. That's really important because if you don't do it at that stage by the time you've finished it's too late. I'm now going to pop this into my machine and stitch round number 13. I've just removed the tape I'm going to flip this up and remove the tape from by the zip. That one should be all right. And I'm going to bring my zip back to about there. I don't want it anywhere near the stitch line, that's for sure. So now I can bring that back down, tape that back in place. Pop it back in my machine and stitch round number 14 and that's going to do the rest of the stitching around here to secure it. So now we've reached the last piece of fabric and we're going to, that's the lining for the back. So we're going to turn our hoop over, place the fabric face down towards the hoop. Make sure it goes all over the outline and tape it in place. I've actually um, got uh, heat and bond on this piece as well. I'm now going to pop that in my machine and stitch around number 15 which is the last round to secure it and that's going to stitch all the way around the edge and leave a gap. I've removed all tape and pins and everything else from my hoop and we're now going to remove the bag. a minute and we're going to trim up. Now I'm going to turn this over 
to the back where we've got this gap here and I've drawn in two lines here that you can see and we're going to cut up those lines and leave obviously a, a, a seam around the edge so first off I'm going to cut along here and get rid of the excess okay and now I'm going to cut up here and then leave a quarter of an inch and same this side and then I can carry on round cut straight through the zip along the top edge and straight through the zip again I'm just going to round these corners a little bit. Okay, I'm going to notch the corners so that when I um, turn it out the right way, they lay nice and neat. So you cut up to the stitching but not through the stitching, that would be disastrous. I'm also going to cut across these corners here taking care obviously not to cut the stitching again okay we're now ready to start turning it out the right way okay to get started because I'm going to reduce the bulk where we've got the batting there so I'm just pulling back all the layers of fabric and just leaving the batting and then I'm just going to trim that down okay that's fine to turn it out the right way you want the side that isn't stitched at the bottom here and you're just going to lift and poke your, your thumb or finger or whatever into the, the gap here and turn it out the right way now it's a bit fiddly because it's not a very big gap and I've got a lot of bulk on mine as well so that doesn't help Oops.
and you're going to expose the zip here. Okay. So you're going to take your scissors and this here is stabiliser and I find the easiest way to do this, if I can find my little tool, here it is, is to get my um, stitch on picker and just catch, you don't want to catch the zip, just the stabiliser. Just make a hole so that you can get your scissors in and then you can trim all the stabiliser that's just showing away. Be careful not to cut your zip though. <laughs> this piece of stitching on the stabiliser cut through it there, there's no uh, risk to your bag All fingers and thumbs tonight <laughs> so now I'm just going to pull the zip through so that I can open it right up like that now we need to deal with these pieces here and you're going to fold them under and you can hand stitch along here I, I would just do a little ladder stitch all the way along okay I've pressed this I've pushed my corners out properly before I sewed up the bottom here I just did a quick over stitch there so that's all nice and neat and hidden and I can now turn it out the right way properly and because I've turned my corners out properly before I stitched it up when I turn it back through out the right way through the zip here the corners will sit nice and neatly it's um, once you've sewn it up uh, I, I would imagine it's gonna be really jolly difficult to correct it if you haven't got it right see how nice and neat they are now and the same here And now we have a lovely little cute bag. I hope you enjoyed this stitch along. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified of new videos as they're published. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or you can find me on Creative Kiwi's Facebook group. Thank you very much for joining me.